Is this the Black Swan event that we've been waiting for? Certainly it's too early to tell, but at this time we can see the direct economic impact that this has had on top of an already weak global economy. Central banks will certainly act at some point in the near future, but without much room to move down, as in the case of the Fed, what will they do exactly? Their idea of supporting the economy is still on a decade later, but somehow it would seem completely inefficient to actually backstop a recession. This will surely be interesting. Thing. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to get into all the details you need to know right now. I'm going to give it to you top to bottom. No more wasting time. Let's begin. Take a look at what happened in the markets today, down 879 points on the Dow Jones. We are seeing 1,900 points down in a matter of two days. This is quite significant, of course. The S&P, the NASDAQ, all the rest, all seem to be taking a hit. The VIX is actually at 2785. It has spiked upward, and we will see where that goes. I know that a lot of people were shorting that. It was getting easy and easier and easier because of the liquidity in the system provided by the central banks but suddenly that flipped around just like it did in January 2018 a lot of the patterns were very similar to what we saw back then this case here could be much worse we'll see how it all plays out this is interesting 64% of the S&P 500 is in correction territory. That is, of course, 10% down from their recent 52-week highs. Meanwhile, 25% of the S&P are at bear market levels or 20% or more below their 52-week highs. And we're talking about big names. This is important to understand because a lot of people are unaware of how significant this drop actually was. This is pretty important to follow. You need to see not just the stocks that you own, not just the country that you own those stocks in, but you need to track it all. The more indicators that you follow it is going to give you such a better perspective on what's really going on. I wanted to show you the technicals. I know that this is basically very blurry. It's very small, the font. But just understand that we are looking at the different moving averages, 200, 150, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the Russell, and the S&P 500. All of them are getting destroyed right now. Those support levels are being broken, and we are seeing this happen in such a short period. That is worrisome, but could be considered a big catalyst. We're going to see what happens, of course. Course. My favorite chart. Oh my goodness, I love it. The S&P 500 versus the global liquidity proxy. I've always said that these move in lockstep. They move together. When one moves up, so does the other. When one moves down, so does the other. There are variances along the way. There are divergences along the way, but eventually they always meet up. You've heard me say that many times before. Then we saw this divergence taking place most recently and I'm quite certain that on a video you know if it was this week or last week whenever it was I suggested that these would have to come together at some point just like the GDP and the stock market when you see those comparisons it's unbelievable regardless this is what we're looking at and they did converge at this moment certainly we could have seen the global liquidity proxy come upward instead of the S&P 500 coming down as much as it did i don't follow it that closely what i'm looking at here is that these generally move together and yet again they meet face to face so let's see what happens obviously the most important factor for what's going on inside of these financial markets is what central banks do Jim Cramer warns that buying any balance after the Dow's 1,000 point plunge is a sucker's game, essentially saying we don't know all the details. We have a lot of questions right now, so why are you going to buy in at this moment? Wait until some of these questions are answered. Wait until there's a bit of sanity back into the situation, because you don't know. It could certainly fall down further. Yes, you might have a day where it comes up a little bit, the future's right now at this moment are actually looking like they've come up but nobody knows what's going to happen over the next few days it's too early to tell 
And then we have Larry Kudlow. This one though is interesting because it's from December 2007. And he said this, there ain't no recession. This was back in December 2007. What's interesting about December 2007 was that's the beginning of the recession. Yesterday's tremendous ADP jobs report puts the dagger into the very heart of the recession case. That's right. Look at that jobs report because that's going to tell you how healthy the economy is. Not only do I see this on CNBC, not only do I see it referred to by traders of all kinds, I see it in the comments as well. The comments are funny because this is the typical retail trader. They're not aware of what's actually going on because they're listening to people like Kudlow, not necessarily Kudlow himself, but people like Kudlow. People who are there to promote the propaganda instead of having your best interests in mind. All in all, the S&P 500 lost $1.7 trillion in market value in two days. Volatility is normal, said Art Hogan. What's scary about this particular drop from the all-time high is that it has snuck up on us so quickly in a short period of time. This is what I was talking about. When you juxtapose that against the mentality of we don't know how big this thing can get, that makes it feel like it's a bottomless reaction in the market. Very important to understand this all, how it plays out. Of course, only time will tell. Billionaire investor Mario Gabaldi said Tuesday that the sell-off in the U. US stock market could accelerate and said that conditions reminded him of the dramatic pullback in the 1980s. It reminds me of 1987 and it's an area where everyone is going to try and get out of the exit door and it's going to be very narrow. Doesn't that sound like the money GPS to you? What have we talked about with the ETFs where you have a lot of people invested in a very small sub set of the stock market. I mean, even people today that buy bonds, they're really just buying ETFs. That is not good. This is something that people need to be watching out for, diversifying their portfolios for, because this is a potential catalyst to something very, very big. Average movement by the S&P 500 after VIX spikes over 20. Take a look at this. Here we look at the average S&P 500 movements following a VIX spike over the 20 level when a second VIX spike followed the first spike within 10 to 20 trading days. The relief rally did not achieve a halfway retracement. So let's see where it goes. Right now it's above 27. That could certainly ease tomorrow. Who knows? I'll give you updates on this as well. Retail frenzy. Trading volume at U.S. discount brokerages is exploding. Take a look at the number of trades just over the past few years. In particular, at the end of 2019 into 2020, it has gone berserk. What does that tell you about who's buying into this market? The euphoria is there and the retail traders are always last to get in. Market implied number of rate cuts by the end of 2020. They are pricing in 2.5 rate cuts by the end of 2020. We'll see what happens because the market certainly needs it. They need that dose. They need that drip. They need anything that will help out. The yield curve inversion continues. You could see that. Just wanted to give you an update on it. Perhaps the Federal Reserve will cut some interest rates and try to give that a boost. We'll see what happens. Europe's market's all down for the year. It's not just the U.S., of course. Everybody is feeling this right now. Look at the PMIs. This is going to go much, much lower. This happens to be the Eurozone PMIs. But ultimately, we know what's going to happen as soon as we get the next reports. There are some that have actually been showing positivity, which doesn't make any sense to me right now. But as they all come out, I'm going to give you the details. Hong Kong's GDP down. We knew this was coming. This was expected. The retail sales, same situation because they've had multiple events in a row. Not good for them now. That's for sure. But you don't have to worry because in Hong Kong, they are actually going to give people 
10,000 of their currency to every individual over the age of 18. What does that equate to? I think it was something like $1,300 or so, maybe $1,800. Regardless, they're giving everybody a paycheck, trying to get the economy going again. If you get that $1,300, what are you going to do? Are you going to put it under your mattress? Some people might, but they are hoping that you're going to go out there, you're going to go to the restaurants, you're going to go buy some things at the store, you're going to spend that back into the economy and try to get it boosted again. Despite the fact that they are at a record deficit, they're going to push this further and further. They need to right now because the economy is suffering. More NYC hotel loans are defaulting as room rates fall. And you know what? I hear a lot of people all the time. Well, you know what? That corporation is bad. That corporation sucks. I don't like those guys or those guys, but they don't understand what's more important than all of that. We're looking at derivatives. A report also found that at least 21 CMBS mortgages backed by New York hotels are watch listed for potential difficulties. That's right we have to be very careful about derivatives 99.9 percent of the people in the financial industry investors everybody all in the pile they don't get derivatives not even a little bit they buy into a stock like amazon they got their seven shares and they feel content but they need to do their homework GE shed about 78,000 workers in 2019. 28% of their workforce gone. What does that tell you about what's happening to one of the biggest companies around? GE is huge. Don't think about GE as your fridge and toaster. We're talking about a company that is in everything, top to bottom. Understand what it means when a company like GE is affected at such a ridiculous level. This is unbelievable. And then I wanted to leave you with this, just to look at this chart. You can pause it for yourself. Essentially, the dependency on China, how significant it is. Bottom left corner essentially is the lower dependence. Top right, we're seeing higher dependence. USA is one of the higher ones, that's for sure. Canada seems to be somewhere in the middle there, but definitely check it out. I'm gonna end the video there. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you give me a like, you are supporting this channel. If you watch the advertisements at the beginning, you are definitely supporting me as well. Thank you very much. If you want to learn about e-commerce, if you wanna understand it all, but you didn't wanna pay that thousand or $2,000 that these courses out there charge you, take the Amazon GPS. It's totally free, theamazongps.com. In these two books, I teach you everything you need to know about the financial system so that you can ask the right questions. You can do what you have to to prepare and to have that foundation set up. Check it out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook. It's available at themoneygps.com. This video right here is so important. Have you seen it? If not, I definitely recommend clicking on this and I will see you there.